Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Margaret. I am an author and I was born with tricuspid atresia. This month is Pride Month and I found, I was scrolling through Facebook and I found somebody like back in 2018 and I like remembered this person in my head. And so I went back into all the old logs on Facebook, all the groups that I'm in for CHD and I found him. And so I reached out and I said, hey, would you like to be interviewed for Pride Month on my channel? And he said, yes. So today we are interviewing Alex. Alex was born female and is transitioning to male and is also undergoing hormone treatments for that. And he also was born with tricuspid atresia. So today we're gonna ask some questions and see medically on the medical side, what it was like uh, to communicate with a cardiologist on hormone therapy and, and uh, as I throw something, <laughs> um, hormone therapy and then also transitioning. So without further ado, let's go ahead and interview Alex. Hello, Alex. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, thank you for having me. Let's just have you share what is your CHD. Okay, so my CHD is I have tricuspid atresia. Um, you know, that comes with the uh, tricuspid valve didn't form. Um, and I also have the ventricular septal defect that goes with it, which means the septum uh, in between the two ventricles didn't form. So it's kind of just one, you know, they've always told me you just have three chambers. That's how it goes. Um, and then I had coarctation of the aorta, which just means it was, um, it was blocked. So that was the uh, first surgery I had to correct. But yeah, so that's what I have. Okay. And you've had three surgeries. So one of them was the Fontaine, correct? Yep. So uh, what do you identify as? So I identify as, um, as you mentioned before, I am, you know, female to male transgender, um, but I specifically identify as um, transmasculine, agender transmasculine, which just means I've transitioned, my body has transitioned and to more, you know, masculine qualities into more of man, obviously, but I still feel like my gender is more ambiguous. Um, so that's why I like the, the transmasculine. It doesn't necessarily even say trans man, because, you know, a lot of time I don't feel like a man, but, and then as for sexuality, I just, I just go by queer. It's just the easiest. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and when in your life did you, like, what age were you thinking, I think, you know, I, I am the, identify more as the opposite or uh, the opposite gender, or um, when did you kind of think that maybe you wanted to transition? So I guess it's a twofold question because those are two separate things. <laughs> yeah, no, that's totally fine. So I feel like, I know, I know a lot of people are like, oh, I've known all my life, but I didn't know all my life actually. Um, I, I didn't really think about gender that much until going through puberty. And I was a pretty late bloomer, so it wasn't until I was like, you know, maybe 15 or 16 when I started questioning like, oh, I, I don't know if this feels comfortable for me. I don't know if this body feels comfortable for me. So I explored a little bit, a little bit of gender neutrality, but um, because of, you know, bullying and family, you know, it just kind of, I just kind of went back in the closet and I was like, you know what? I just need to be hyper feminine all the time and maybe that will fix it. So, and it wasn't until I was about 19, I think 19 or 20, when I finally realized, I was like, oh my God, I'm trans. Like, why did I not think of this sooner? So, and then I, I shortly started my um, transition after, after I came out, so. What did the cardiologist say about your thoughts on, on transitioning? Sure. So hormone therapy was like the first thing on my mind, honestly, because I was just like, I need some sort of relief because I'm not feeling great about my body right now. Um, and it was kind of like with my cardiologist, it was kind of like, a, oh, well, you know, I, we've never experienced this. We don't know what this is going to look like. And I think because I've been so healthy since my last surgery when I was three, they decided to, you know, you know what? I think, you know, you'd be able to handle this if anybody. So we'll see how it goes. Um, and I got started off on a very, very low dose of testosterone. 
Um, and I'm still on pretty uh, a comparatively low dose than other people who have been transitioning for a certain amount of time, you know? It was a lot of like, well, we're not sure how this is gonna go, but you have to let us know if something's not right type of thing. And um, yeah, everything seemed fine. It was mostly more of uh, affecting my mental health and like my behavior. And um, it gave me a lot more energy, which is difficult when you have a heart problem because it's like, you can't really do too much about it. But other than that, it, it's been pretty fine. I haven't had any major issues. Um, but every time I do have a problem, the first thing they always say is, oh, it must be the hormones. Because I guess it would be easy to eliminate, I guess. But yeah, it's been pretty great so far. Okay, so they were in the dark. They were like, we don't know. We can't give you an idea of what, of, you know, what could happen. Did Were they able to be like, okay, here's some things that you might want to watch out for, like at least some direction. So you weren't like, well, it's, everything's changing, you know, <laughs> just right. to know what exactly. like symptoms you were looking for. Right. So, um, what they were specifically looking for or worried about was blood clots, because that's very common for people who are on hormone therapy, even like people on birth control, blood clots is just like a very, very, you know, it's, it's a risk. And um, so it's something I really had to look out for, but I've also been on blood thinner since I was eight. So they were like, well, we're not really that concerned about blood clots because you are on a pretty high dose of blood thinners. So it shouldn't be too much to worry about, but I was told to watch out for, you know, my legs swelling, um, you know, my, my toes and my hands being blue, you know, stuff like that. And um, so, but yeah, that was, that was about it. That's all they were really worried about was just blood clots and stuff and yeah. Okay. And um, you mentioned that testosterone gives you more energy. What was, what did that feel like? <laughs> 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 that felt um at the start overwhelming at first because it was like and luckily I was in college at the time and I was working and I was like running back and forth on campus so it's like I did get a lot of that energy out but a lot of it was also kind of like manic energy like you just feel like you can do everything and anything all at once and um more of like a an anxious kind of energy um Whereas, you know, I didn't really exercise that much. I was just, you know, I was way too busy with school and stuff. Um, but yeah, it was, it was pretty overwhelming, especially the day I took my shot. Cause I take it once every week on the same day. Um, so like the day I did take my shot and the day after it was just like, I was just so anxious and full of energy. And then towards the end of it, I would just be like exhausted because I'd be on low on testosterone. Whereas my body is like used to it all the time. So it's, it was an interesting change of pace, but now I've been on tea for five years now, so I'm very much used to it. My body's adjusted to it well, so yeah. When in those five years did the cardiologist say, okay, we can up the dosage or did it stay consistent all the way through? So it, it actually wasn't my cardiologist who suggested it, it was my endocrinologist. Oh, okay, um, that makes yeah. more sense. <laughs> <laughs> You're good, but um, it did have to get approved by my cardiologist, so yes. Um, so I think it was after maybe a whole year they decided to up the dose, and then they they got it up again, and it was way too much, so I just got it back. I brought it back down, and um, yeah, so I've been consistently on the same dose for about four years now, um, and I've transitioned, you know, physically transitioned a lot slower than other um, trans people have who can take, you know, normal doses, but that doesn't really bother me much because I knew I was going to get there eventually, you know? And so that kind of dives into my next question. How was your mental health during that whole process? Because I'm assuming it fluctuated. And what was that experience like for you and how did you cope with it? Sure. So my mental health at the time I started testosterone was pretty rough because I didn't come out at the greatest time because it was like I came out a week before I was going to start testosterone. So I came out to my family. I was like, well, you know, I'm trans and I'm, I'm starting hormones next week. So I hope you process it quickly. Um, 
which is like, you know, I don't think there's a, ever a bad time to come out, but, um, you know, my family wasn't that supportive at first. So it was very, very hard. And I was like, it was this mix of being extremely upset because, you know, because of my family, but also being so excited to start testosterone finally. Um, and then I noticed a change of my mental health because I've always struggled with depression and anxiety, but the depression was always, always worse. So when I started testosterone, I noticed the anxiety started becoming a lot worse. I was so anxious all of the time, like physically anxious, like I'd make myself sick and, um, you know, I'd just be sweaty because testosterone makes you sweat too. So does anxiety. So I was just sweaty and it was, it was uncomfortable. And, um, you know, being on testosterone itself didn't make me anxious. It was like, you know, everything happening around me, you know, my life at the time was just making me anxious. So, um, but it just made the anxiety of like, you know, normal stuff you're normally anxious about a million times worse. But, um, since then I, it's, uh, leveled out and I'm, I'm pretty good now. <laughs> That's good. Did you find during that, those years of, of the increased anxiety, did you find ways to cope with it? Or did you just kind of like power through? Um, I kind of just powered through it. I went to counts, I went and saw a couple counselors, but because I couldn't afford to go to like an actual counselor, they were all just like graduate students at my school, which is like, that's fine for people who like, you know, have school anxiety, but like I was going through it. So I, I attempted counseling a couple times, but I've always had my partner as well, um, my, my now spouse. So at the time I had them, you know, to help me out with stuff to make me feel like, uh, you know, grounded in the world and like, like everything was falling apart. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really thankful that I had my partner at the time and throughout all of my transition. That's good. It definitely does help to have somebody there. Yeah, I know for me that has been very helpful. <laughs> yeah. Are you on any medication for your CHD and did that conflict with anything that, any part of the transition process? So, um, no, actually it didn't, you know, interfere at all, which was really helpful. Um, like I said, I was I'm on the blood thinners. Um, I take about, I, I take four milligrams of, uh, cumin in a day, and I also take enalapril, which is, you know, a blood pressure medica uh, medication. Um, and I used to take aspirin every day, but I don't anymore. So those were like what I took every day, um, for my, my CHD. And, and I think the cumin actually helped because it lowered the risk of like blood clots, like I said earlier, which was, which was good. So... But yeah, I've never had like a problem with them or anything. Okay. Okay. Did the hormone uh, replacement therapy affect your CHD in any way? Um, so it, it didn't actually. Um, I actually feel like I've been a lot healthier since I actually transitioned. Um, that I've been on testosterone because like I said, I had high energy and it's, it's encouraged me to, um, you know, exercise more transitioning to, you know, be in a body that I feel comfortable in has, you know, uh, encouraged me to exercise more to build more muscle now that I'm on testosterone. It's what it does. Um, but what has affected that is I can't do too much. So my cardiologist has told me like, you know, you shouldn't lift heavy weights. You should only, you know, 20 pounds at most. And, you know, don't, don't push yourself while running. Cause I do run when I, when I can. Um, but yeah, that's, I've, I've got limits because of my CHD. Um, but you know, my transition hasn't, you know, affected anything like that, which has been, I'm thankful for because I, I don't want to go off testosterone if I don't have to, you know? Yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm glad that it hasn't really affected much and and you're able to monitor it and and keep uh like monitor your chd um so that's great awesome before we get to the last question which is kind of like a wrap-up question do you have anything that you would want to share uh in general about your experience yeah sure so i would like to share a little bit about my experience with top surgery um mm -hmm. because that's been the most major surgery i've had since my uh chd um, you know, since that, that surgery. Um, so I had top surgery about two and a half years ago. Um, 
Yeah, almost three. I got it done on December 18th, 2018. It was like three days after I graduated college. So it was like everything happening at once. <laughs> but um, so I had my top surgery. I had it at um, the same kind of facility where, where my cardiologist is, like, you know, upstate in Syracuse. That was an experience because I was so scared because, you know, I haven't had surgery since, um, you know, and I don't really remember the surgery because I was three. So it was like, oh, this is scary. And I didn't have small breasts. Let me put it that way. So they were big and they were going to like scar and it was going to be, you know, it was like the whole, I've got the scars and everything um, from that. Whereas like some surgeries, if you have breasts that are small enough, they can do it without scars or like very limited scars. But as for me, that didn't happen. But, um, but so that experience was actually, it was very mixed. I was afraid I was going to be in a lot of pain and I was going to have problems, you know, chest problems you know, for some reason, because I was just, you know, having anxious thoughts like that. But it turns out it actually went really, really well because I had, I'm taking blood thinners. I had to, you know, not take those for a couple of days prior to my surgery, which was a little different. It doesn't feel very different, but it, it felt... I don't know. It was like, I'm warmer. I can tell that I'm warmer. Like, <laughs> Right, because blood thinners like make you cold. <laughs> right, exactly. I think the most memorable part was I had to wear drains, like chest drains, for a whole week. And so they were like tubes that came out of like, uh, out of like my sides here, like little tubes. And then the little pouch, they have like pouches that collect blood, would just hang off of me. And I had to wear those for like a whole week. And um, it was a lot of blood because I'm on blood thinners. So it was not fun to clean up. It was not, cause I had to like, you know, squirt it out. I'm sorry, this is gross. But I had to like squirt it out and clean it like every 12 hours at least. Right, so, so that it doesn't um, block. Right, exactly. So that was, that was pretty gross. <laughs> but it, I was lucky to get the drains out a week later as as promised some people are like oh i had my drains for like a whole month because they don't let you take them out unless it's like a certain level of stuff's coming out so yeah the drains were not fun uh and healing wasn't as bad as i thought like i said before i i bruised a lot obviously i had some pretty gnarly bruising you know around the scar and the incision and such and just like on my stomach like the like the blood just like pulled down and bruised on my stomach so that was rough. I looked like I got beat up, but <laughs> but it was it was fine. I healed very quickly, surprisingly quickly, whereas I could like, you know, lift my arms and stuff up after four weeks. The scars look great. I didn't do any scar care. A lot of people do like after after care on their scars after surgery. I didn't bother because, you know, I was like, you know what? I already have scars on my chest. I don't like what am I trying to hide? Like <laughs> So, and it, it gives me an excuse. People could be like, oh, why do you have all those scars on your chest? And it's like, well, I had heart surgery, obviously. It's like, I don't, I don't have to say I had top surgery, you know? <laughs> right, exactly. But um, yeah, so with the scars, because I have a scar that goes along here and up my back from, you know, uh, heart surgery, uh, this scar over here just kind of like merged into that one. So it's all just like one long scar. And it just, it just looks really good. It like healed really well. And so yeah, to having top surgery is a great experience. Um, of course I had to get approved by my cardiologist. I had to go to a whole separate appointment and get all checked out a week before. It was awesome. I'm, I mean, I'm glad I don't have to go through it again because <laughs> it was like a whole month of healing. It was like a whole month I couldn't work. That sucked. But other than that, it was like, I finally felt, you know, like I was in the right body. So. It was really nice. That's great. I'm glad that it all worked out and you were able to do that and the cardiologist was like, yep, go for it. <laughs> yeah, me too. So we've come to the last question and this question is kind of general. Um, for anyone who has CHD and maybe is considering transitioning hormone therapy or maybe even top surgery, what are some of your um, pointers or advice or thoughts that you would like to share with them? Sure. So I just would like to say, you know, don't be afraid of, you know, being yourself and 
don't feel like because you're in this place where you you have this CHD that means you can't do what you know is going to make you feel good because I felt like that for a very long time when I was contemplating um you know physically transitioning I was like well I don't even know if I'll be able to and this was before I came out so I like you know was afraid to ask um questions about it I was afraid that you know I would just be told no right off the bat which you know I'm sure that's happened to a lot of people and you know uh, my heart goes out to them because that sucks because you know because of my chd and i'm sure everyone here can uh you know agree it can be limiting it can be very limiting i remember you know in high school i wasn't allowed to run the mile and it was kind of embarrassing you know so it's like yeah there are you have to be held back in some places and it sucks but you know this doesn't have to be one of them you know talk to your cardiologist about transitioning um, doctors nowadays are, are trained on these things and they know the language and, um, you know, they're here to help and there are just a lot of options out there. Just be yourself, man. I, I'm just like, I'm so happy I physically transitioned and I'm, I'm so happy that I, I built the courage to actually, you know, ask the questions I needed to ask. So it's just, you just have to do it. Um, but yeah, it's possible because here I am happy and, and thriving and it's possible. Well, thank you so much. I'm so happy that you shared that um, because a lot of people might feel really nervous about talking to their cardiologist or um, maybe they've gotten a, a reaction from their cardiologist that is not the greatest. And so I definitely want to add in that um, whoever your medical professional is, you have always the right to switch. Um, not because they're giving you answers you don't want to hear, but maybe to get a second opinion or to have somebody who's a little bit similar to you and not so different and, you know, you communicate in a better way. People might surprise you. Your doctors might surprise you. So, you know, I was always afraid, like, because I had, uh, you know, normal, straight, white male doctors, and I was kind of nervous about bringing that up and... Um, because as, as somebody who was raised as a woman into their 20s, um, it's very much a talk of like pregnancy and like, what are, what are you thinking on that? And it's just like, I don't, I don't even want my uterus. I don't know what to tell you. Like, <laughs> So specifically for trans men, I know it can be a little um, intimidating, especially if you're a little older and, and um, wanting to physically transition. I want to say thank you to you for your amazing amount of courage to come up here and share your story and kind of some of the hardships and some of the good things and um, get it out there so that others can learn from your experience. So you've been um, brave. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Just, you know, be yourself. Don't hold yourself back because, you know, the world surprises you and, you know, you even might surprise yourself. So.